Welcome to the monthly recap here within the Yankees franchise. We do this at the end of every month, and this will be the first edition of the 2016 season, as we just finished up April 2016. If you are unfamiliar with what the monthly recap is, it is basically at the end of every month we go over the trades, the signings, who's doing well, the stats, the league leaders, all that good stuff throughout the first throughout the month of the season that was just completed, and in this case it is the first month of April. And at the end of April, the Yankees are currently sitting at 13 and 11 on the season, finished the month of April, two games over 500, and they are one game behind the Orioles for first place in the AL East, while they are currently in a three-way tie for the American League wildcard with the Angels and the Detroit Tigers. As far as the hitting goes, Brett Gardner and Jacoby Ellsbury, the two guys at the top of the lineup for the Yankees, are back to performing nicely once again, but they are not having that weird trend that they had in 2015 where Gardner and Ellsbury were leading the team at the top of the team in home runs and RBI. You don't exactly expect that from guys in your 1-2 holes, and this year they're being more of a 1-2 hole hitter. Gardner is currently hitting 303 with 4 RBI, 10 stolen bases, 23 hits. He is second on the team in stolen bases and hits. And then Ellsbury is hitting 264, a bit lower average, but he is still getting the job done. 5 RBI, 11 stolen bases, 24 hits, 8 doubles. He is first on the team in stolen bases, hits, and doubles, and he only has one more hit and stolen base than Gardner, so they're pretty much neck and neck for those two categories as of right now, as they were in 2015 at this point as well, but then Jacoby decided to turn on the Jets and steal 50+. plus. Chase Headley started the season towards the bottom half of the order, but he started to pick things up and A-Rod started to struggle, so he was sent down to the bot to the third hole, as he is now the three-hitter heading into May, and he's only hitting 226, but he does have four home runs, 15 RBI, and five doubles, and he leads the team in home runs and RBI expectively. Two other guys who have been quite solid for the team so far have been Aaron Judge. He's hitting 264, two home runs, eight RBI, 14 runs scored, and four doubles. Those 14 runs scored is also leading the Yankees. So nobody has crossed the plate more times this season than Aaron Judge. The six foot seven right fielder has been a quite a good spot in that right field spot in the five and six hole, depending on which which hitter, which type of pitcher they are facing. As well as Brian McCann has also had quite a good season in that cleanup spot. He's only hitting 259, but not, it's not exactly bad. It's not good either. It's average. It's above average, I would say. So McCann's hitting 259, three home runs, 13 RBI. He is second on the team in home runs and RBI. And a big part to the Yankees' run production last year that was missing was Brian McCann, who was on the 60-day DL with a broken finger for a good chunk of last season, and they are hoping he is not going to be on the DL for a good chunk of this season, as without Brian McCann, they lose a big bat in their lineup, and they need these big bats in order to score runs and have a better offense than they did last season. Well, one of the guys they hoped would do well and is not doing well is Greg Bird. He's only hitting 173, and despite having four home runs, which is tied for Headley with the home runs lead on the team, he only has five RBIs to go with those four home runs, so he's basically only hitting solo shots. And he's hitting fifth against right-handers at the left-handed bat, and he's hitting sixth against left-handers in the right-handed bat, and he has zero extra base hits. So he's basically only hitting solo shots and a single here and there. He's not doing anything else, and you definitely want to see that improve. And they're not ready to give up on Greg Bird, considering it's only the first month of his season, the first time he's been starting in the major leagues. But you definitely want to see better production than a 173 and a couple solo shots from your fifth, sixth hitter. Now for the interesting part of this year's Yankee team is the pitching. And the Yankees pitching bullpen and rotation have basically been dominant all season long. David Carpenter has been the definition of shut down in the bullpen this year. Ten games appeared, he is 2-0 with a 0.55 ERA. That is ridiculously low. Six inning, 16 innings pitched and 16 strikeouts, so he's striking out at least one guy per inning as well. While Tyler Olsen was a huge pickup in the offseason, was a low-key guy to pick up in the offseason, as even though he won Rookie of the Year, the Mariners were just letting him go, and he's not exactly a high-profile guy, but the Yankees went out and got him, and the left-hander has been quite good for this team 
Five games started, 3-1 and one in the season with a 2.60 ERA. He doesn't strike out many people, only 23 strikeouts in 34.2 innings, but he gets the job done, has a lot of quality starts, has a decent amount of complete games. He pitches well, and that is exactly what they wanted from their only lefty in the starting rotation. And Nathan Ovaldi has also been quite good for the Yankees. Six games started, 2-2 two and two record, and his 1.69 ERA is really where you get things excited. As that ERA is very low, it is the lowest starter ERA on the team, and he is currently the number two starter on the team. We'll get back, and we'll get into that a bit in a bit, while he has 21 strikeouts and 37.1 innings pitched. So he doesn't strike out a lot of people, but he does get the job done. Well, Tanaka, he's also been doing quite well, not as well as Evaldi, but he's doing quite well. He has five games started. He's only one and two with the record, which contests to run support and not Tanaka's pitching ability, but he does have a 2.93 ERA, which is under three, so any ERA under three is definitely good. And he's striking out a decent amount of people, 34 strikeouts and 30.2 innings. I would expect that that ratio, that K per nine ratio to pick up, but he is definitely pitching well as their number one. And Luis Severino, another guy, a young guy in the rotation. This is his rookie season still despite having a cup of coffee last year in 2015. He's got three starts so far, four appearances, a 1-1 one and one record with a 2.05 ERA, 17 strikeouts, 22 innings pitch. Following the theme of most Yankees pitchers, not a lot of strikeouts in those innings, but he is definitely getting the job done with a low ERA, just not getting the run support you would hope he would get. Now, three starts only for him, 1-1, one one, not bad. He's not getting a lack of run support as much as the other guys are, like like Tanaka and Evaldi, but he's definitely, definitely pitching well, especially for a young guy in the rotation. And then the bullpen has also been quite shut down, especially the 8th and ninth innings. The 8th inning guy, as you're all familiar with, is Andrew Miller, the shutdown lefty, Mr. Tall and Lanky. He has pitched 6.2 innings, and in those 6.2 innings, he's struck in at 12 batters, basically two an inning. That's a ridiculous average. And he has two holds on the season, and the crazy stat is in those six innings, he has not given up a single run on the season. He has a 0.00 ERA. And why is the eighth and ninth shutdown? Is because Batansis is a little bit of the same. He's appeared in four games so far on the season, four innings pitched, being the closer and only pitching one inning per game. And in those four innings, he's picked up four saves, seven strikeouts in four innings, and he also hasn't given up a run. So Batansis and Miller are the definition of shutdown, and the Yankees' 8th and ninth innings, when they're leading, are very, very good innings. If you are down to the Yankees in the 8th and ninth in the month of April, you lost that game. And then the other relievers in the bullpen aren't too shabby either. Jacob Lindgren has been quite good in this season, a 1.29 ERA, the rookie. In his first Major League season, seven innings pitched. He was not up at all in 2015, so he was thrown right into the bullpen at the start of 2016 after a solid spring training, and he has not let this team down as he has been quite good with that 1.29 ERA. Adam Warren, four games pitched, 2.61 ERA, not too shabby either. Jabba Chamberlain acquired from the Tigers in a trade that sent Daniel Vicieto to the Tigers. In return, they got Jabba Chamberlain, and Jabba has pitched in nine games so far and a 3.4 ERA. He got off to a shaky start in his first two Yankees appearances, but he has definitely calmed down and gotten the ERA down into the low threes. And the guy who has definitely been the worst pitcher so far on this Yankees staff is the guy who will not be pitching for six plus months in Michael Pineda. He tore his rotator cuff as the Yankees were just about thinking about trading him any day, pretty much, and he went out for a start and he got injured. Torn rotator cuff, six plus months, he is Gonzo Alonzo for all that time. In five games started, he was only one and two with a 5.11 ERA, which is a very bad ERA. 25 strikeouts and 24.2 innings, which isn't too shabby of a ratio, but the ERA... The runs, that was all a terrible, terrible time for Pineda as Big Mike continues to struggle with the Yankees as he did in 2015. He was also injured last season 
and he's struggling so far here, and he's going to be out for six plus months. So, so what they did to replace Pineda was move up everybody in the rotation once. So now the rotation goes Tanaka, Avaldi, Olsen, and Severino as the one, two, three, four, and then the fifth guy was called up from AAA in Asher Wojohowski. He is back in the rotation. He's the fifth spot, and he is there to take hold of that job and keep it as long as he pitches well. That will be the one, two, three, four, five as long as everyone stays healthy. There was also one roster move that the Yankees made as well. They sent down Robert Ref Snyder to AAA to work on some of his craft and maybe call him back up later in the season. But as of right now, he was struggling, so they sent him back down to AAA to work on his skills, hopefully get hot, and then call him up. As in 73 at-bats in the major leagues this season, he had only 15 hits, 2 home runs, 7 RBI, a 205 average, and he was sent down to AAA Scranton Wilkes-Barre, and they called up from triple from double a was dino cruz he skipped triple a as an 18 year old and dino cruz is going to be slotted into that starting second base position as an 18 year old in the bronx big time limelight for the rookie hopefully he can deal with the limelight and the Yankees have been thinking about doing another roster move as well as alex rodriguez is currently struggling a lot in the major leagues in that DH spot. They don't know if he's going to be... They're, they're thinking he is going to be the next man to lose his job. Currently the starting DH, like I said, they don't know if they're going to move him to the bench. They don't know if they're going to DFA him because nobody's going to take on his contract. The most likely move was to be to move him to the bench as a power battle off the bench, possibly play some third, play some first, or insert in the DH whenever they need him. And Tom Ullman, you saw him in the Prospect Profile video a few episodes back, is the most likely replacement at that DH spot for A-Rod. So if they do decide to send down A-Rod if he can't turn things around, Tom Ullman will be that guy who comes up and replaces him as A-Rod in 21 games this season, has 76 at-bats, zero home runs, as he spent the entire month of April as the number three hitter and hit zero home runs. 6 RBI, a 171 average, 250 OBP, 211 slugging, 216 versus right-handers, and an 080 average versus left-handers, 083 uh, with runners in scoring position. So as a 3-hitter, as any hitter, that are those are horrible, horrible stats. As of right now, he's dropped down into the 8th hole or the 7th hole. He swaps back and forth in between the 7th and 8th hole for this lineup so far as he was spending most of April as the three hitter but now that is head of these spots and if he continues the struggle you can very likely see Alex Rodriguez on the bench and Tom Ullman the 19 year old future Paul Goldschmidt 2.0 as the starting DH here on the Bronx. And with that being said, that'll pretty much wrap things up here for this edition of the monthly recap of April 2016 here in the Yankees franchise. I have been your host Jersey Born and I'm saying goodbye. Skyline.